Uh, my name is Lisa Jacobs, and I'm a surgical oncologist at Johns Hopkins University and Howard County General Hospital. I take care of breast cancer or diseases of the breast and melanoma. When someone is told that they have an abnormality in the breast, either a lump or an abnormal mammogram, it's important to do the right steps in the diagnostic workup. So many times you're scared, you're afraid, and you want to just jump in and say, get that thing out. But you don't want to do that because that potentially would increase the number of surgeries you would have, change the appearance of the breast forever, and change the amount of surgery that's done. So what you want to do is do all the right steps. So you want, to see some, you want to see your primary care physician or your gynecologist, and you want to find out who they want you to see. Uh, we see people commonly who have not had a diagnosis at Howard County. Um, at Johns Hopkins, they would send you to the breast imaging first and have diagnostic biopsies done first. At Howard County, we generally would arrange your biopsies and then see you for follow-up um, and, and let you know what the results are and then what recommendations we would make. Physicians who specialize in breast cancer are people who've pretty much dedicated their entire professional career to managing diseases of the breast. And because that is their primary focus, they are well-versed in all of the standard treatment options and the new treatment options. They potentially have research studies available to you that may not be available to others. And in addition to that, it, there have been a number of studies that have shown that high-volume centers and high-volume surgeons have actually better survival. And that translates into a survival that's essentially equivalent to the survival from radiation therapy. So it is a significant survival benefit to seeing someone who is high-volume. In general, most patients with breast cancer will have a variety of treatments, and that's because we're trying to fight the tumor on a, through a variety of mechanisms. So almost everyone with breast cancer will have surgery, and many people with breast cancer will have chemotherapy. Depending on the type of surgery that's done and depending on the lymph nodes, then many people will also have radiation therapy and many people will have hormonal therapy, which is an anti-estrogen therapy. From a surgical standpoint, there are, there are essentially two treatment choices from surgery. The first is to do breast preservation, which means we save as much of the breast tissue as possible, and the second is to do a mastectomy. In both of those cases, we're doing everything we can to give the best overall appearance of the breast or the area as we can. The prognosis for breast cancer is actually very good. Um, it's one of the reasons I like doing what I do because many of these people, many of the women with breast cancer are very concerned and I have, and because I know that breast cancer does well, I can reassure them that they should do fine um, and that we, that we have very good treatments and very um, effective therapies for treatment of breast cancer. Um, people with a stage 1 breast cancer, which is why you should get your screening mammography. You want to be diagnosed at stage 1 or stage 2. Uh, screening mammography helps with that. Uh, people diagnosed at stage 1 or stage 2 have a 90, 85, 90 to 95% survival, so between 85 and 95, depending on the tumor type and the tumor size. Uh, people diagnosed at later stages also still have good survivals. And even people with metastatic disease, depending on the tumor, we can still get people who have longer survivals than we would have anticipated for stage 4 disease. So there are some women with bone-only metastases that spreads to the bones only but is hormone receptor positive, and they can live for years with their metastatic disease. So the, the nice thing about breast cancer being common, if you want to look at the silver lining on the dark cloud, is that it has allowed us to do a lot of research and it's allowed us to identify a lot of treatment options. And many of those options are what we would refer to as targeted, so that we're, not, uh, we're able to give you therapies that we are very confident will be effective against your tumor. And that is of comfort to the individuals, that they know that that treatment's going to work, and they're not doing a treatment for a 3% benefit, but they're doing a treatment for an 80% benefit. 
And those are hormonal therapies and Herceptin, and we're getting more and more targeted therapies that are identified, that we use your tumor to identify what treatments are best for that particular tumor, not just generic breast cancer treatments. 